والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الحمد لله and welcome to this episode of Beauties of Islam I'm Yusuf Estes and for the next few minutes I'd like to talk to you about one of the biggest of the beauties of Islam that has struck me as being probably the best of answers to the human being when when people come to this point or conjunction in their life and they say why are we here how did we get here what's it all about and what is the purpose of my life and that's what we want to talk about on this episode of the beauties of islam what is the purpose behind everything first and foremost is to establish that there is a god now we have done a number of programs about that to prove even scientifically beyond any shadow of a doubt allah exists there have been scientists who have also come to this same conclusion but then there are always going to be those who will say that yes but according to my logic i don't understand i don't see how you can believe in a god according to my logic in our other programs we've discussed this too but human logic only goes so far according to the human logic just 500 years ago most of europe was convinced the earth was flat They didn't know that the Quran had already said it was round 1400 years ago. But what about 2000 years ago? What did the people think about the earth? Human logic, you look straight out and the earth looks flat. You don't really see the curve, do you? No, you don't. So how far can you go with human logic? And stop and think about this. According to our logic if we had to use just this and not know some of the scientific discoveries there are a lot of things that well just wouldn't work I remember okay for instance when I was going to school many years ago they told us according to the aerodynamics of the bee now we're talking about a honey bee you know zzz, little bee right nahl they call him in arabic and this little guy he's kind of fat kind of big and he has tiny wings on him and they said according to their logic according to the aerodynamics that they understood of flight the bee can't fly i said the bee can't fly i was a little boy i was thinking the bee can't fly according to your books according to your teaching according to your aerodynamic design a bee can't fly i said it's a good thing the bee can't read because if he read the book and found out he couldn't fly he'd have to walk to all of the flowers <laughs> human logic human logic is nothing more than a reflection of the current mode of thought of the day people at the time of plato and socrates and the great thinkers of old also thought that they knew everything there was to know about everything but if you want to insist on human logic i will allow that in our conversation simply because it's logical and at the same time i'm going to ask you a question who is it in fact in the very beginning that came out with this concept of logic anyway human logic the brain the way we rationalize things the way we understand things came about from who the very people i just mentioned socrates plato those thinkers and guess what you want to accept that do you accept it yes yeah they came out they were the great thinkers they were the great theologians good did you know that each and every one of them came to the conclusion there is god So you want to talk about that? Well, they said it. The people that you're thinking are so great, so brainy, so brilliant according to their rules of testable evidence, God exists. Now what are you going to say now? So it wouldn't be logical now for you to deny that, would it? If you're going to say I use logic, well logic says God exists. Now what are you going to say? I recall that there was an incident of a professor who insisted 
to his students, there's no God. He kept saying, there's no God, there's no God. And when they said, why? Because most of them, they believe. Some were Jewish, some were Christian, some were Muslims. He said, if I don't see it, if I don't hear it, if I can't feel it, if I can't taste it, if I can't smell it, it doesn't exist. And if it doesn't exist, I don't believe in it. It's as simple as that. One of the students tried to argue with him about it. He was saying, well, God is something beyond that. You have to have faith. You have to believe. And he said, why? Why should I believe? How? How? The boy said, well, I don't know, but we just have to believe. He said, sit down. Another boy stood up and he said, listen, as Muslims, you know, we believe, but we have proof at the same time. He said, proof? What proof do you have? He said, by knowing what God has done and what he's doing, we know he exists. He said, what? What are you talking about? He said, sir, can you see electricity? Well, no, but it still exists. Ah, true. Sir, he said, are you able to hear everything? He said, yes. He said, wait a minute. Aren't there sounds that some animals hear that we can't hear? Well, yes. Okay. Now, there's two things. One, you can't see. One, you can't hear. But you still believe in it, don't you? Well, yeah, but I have, I have evidence. I have scientific evidence. Okay, okay. Now, I'll ask you another thing. Sir, is there such a thing as heat? He said, of course. Everybody knows there's heat. And we measure it as BTUs, British Thermal Units. He said, sir, is there such a thing as cold? He said, yes, there's such a thing as cold. He said, sir, there's not such a thing as cold. There is no cold. What? What are you talking about? I'm sure you'd like to know the answer to that too. So when we come back from the break, let's find out what the student meant when he said there's no such thing as cold and then find out how that relates to the rationale of the human and how we can prove there's God. Right here on Beauties of Islam. Sit tight. We'll be right back. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين. وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا. ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور And thus we have revealed to you an inspiration of our command. You did not know what is the book or what is faith. But we have made it a light by which we guide whom we will of our servants. And indeed, O Muhammad, you guide to a straight path. The path of Allah, to whom belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Unquestionably, to Allah all matters do return. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, we're back and you're watching the beauties of Islam. When we went to the break, I was telling you a story, a story about a professor and some of his students. The students are believers, Christians, Jews, and Muslims, but the professor is an atheist. He doesn't believe anything, and he keeps talking about his rational mind, his logic, his common sense, and he's insisting that there's no God based on all of this. In the discussion, though, one of the students, one of the Muslim students actually, asked him 
to reconsider some of the things he's saying. Because the professor says, if I don't hear it, I don't see it, I don't smell it, I don't taste it, I don't feel it, I don't imagine it, it doesn't exist. The student asked him, though, what about electricity? Do you see electricity? No. Said, but it exists. Well, yeah, you can see the effects of it. True. And what about sounds that animals hear that we don't hear? They're still there, even though you don't hear them. Well, yeah. But then he asked him a question about heat. He said, yes, heat exists. We can feel heat. And he said, what about cold? He said, of course there's cold. He said, hold on. Actually, there's no such thing as cold. What? And that's when the professor started to get really crazy. He said, are you nuts? Of course there's cold. Don't you know what it is to be cold? You go outside and it's cold outside and you... He said, sir, that's a concept that we have of our feelings, of our skin temperature. But in fact, there's no such thing as cold. There is only the existence of heat. Because there's an absolute for cold, 452 degrees Kelvin. And below that, there isn't anything colder. That's absolute. From that, we add to it and go up degree by degree by degree until you get as hot as you want to go. And you can have heat, mega heat, and it can go on and on. But there's no such thing as cold. Heat or the absence of heat. The professor doesn't say a word. Then the student said, sir, is there such a thing as light? He said, are you crazy? Of course there's light. Look around you. How do you see me right now if you don't know about light? He said, you're right, sir. There is light. Is there such a thing as darkness? He said, where are you going with this? Why are you wasting my time? Of course there's darkness. He said, no, there's not. What? <laughs> if you turn off all the lights and the sun's not up, <laughs> you're going to be in the dark, yes or no? Sir, there actually is no such thing as darkness. There is light. But when there is no light, we call it darkness. What? Sir, listen. You can bring light in all forms. You can have candlelight, light from a match, flashlight. You can have megawatts of light, big lights of all kinds. But when you have no light at all, you call it darkness. But in reality, it's still nothing more than what? Absence of light. The professor says, yes, but still I don't see your point. He said, okay, listen. You're saying because you don't see something, you don't hear it, you don't smell it, you don't taste it, you don't feel it, you don't imagine it, it doesn't exist. He said, that's right, and that's what I believe, and now I'm always going to believe that. I said, okay. Sir, has anybody ever seen your brain, heard your brain, smelled your brain, tasted your brain, or felt your brain? No, of course not. He said, then, sir, according to your own rules of testable evidence... You don't have a brain. And this is what happens, you see, when a human being tries to take their logic too far. Because, in fact, it's only Allah who has all knowledge. And Allah gives us from that knowledge, and He takes away from that knowledge. When you're born, you start out zero, and Allah begins to give you knowledge. And if you thought that you're the product of generations upon generations of people learning by trial and error, that's totally and completely incorrect. That would be like thinking that we have to reinvent the wheel every generation. We do learn from past mistakes. We do learn what's in front of us to take advantage of it. But just as we would not accept that you have to reinvent the wheel in every generation, you also don't have to reinvent thinking. There's so much more about this subject. We've got a website all about this. And on the website, you can watch scientists, nine different scientists who were exposed to the teachings of Islam. They understood the Quran and then applied these teachings to their own particular disciplines of science. And they each one concluded, just as the great philosophers of logic did centuries ago, there must be a God. And you can see those videos on our website at beautiesofislam.com. Until next time, peace. Peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum. Islam is peace.